sponsored by Skillshare. AirPods are just such a quintessentially Apple product. They do something old, but in a new and enticing way. When they were announced, people dismissed them or made fun of them. But then when they sold out, same people became desperate to get them. Now Apple has moved on to AirPods Generation 2. I've spent just over 10 days, almost two weeks with them, and here's what I've found out. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. First, the new wireless charging case for AirPods. It looks nearly identical to the original non-wireless case. There's a new hinge design, but it feels every bit as addictively clicky as the original. The charge indicator light has been moved from the inside to the outside, so you can now see the status without having to pick it up and open it. Also new, it has an inductive charging coil inside, so you can drop it on any Qi standard inductive charging pad, the same kind that works with any of the iPhones 8 or 10, and top it up without having to plug it in. No fuss, no muss. Charging happens at 5 watts, and doing it inductively with Qi will always take longer than the old-fashioned way, about one and a half times longer until full. If you're leaving them on the pad overnight or while you're working, that's not going to matter to you. But if you need them charged faster, you can still plug them in via lightning cable and get the job done in two hours instead of three. That's right, lightning. Any nerd hoping for any sign that after the new iPads Pro, Apple would keep pushing USB-C down the line should probably stop hoping, at least for now. And all the normal non-nerd folks oh so happy they can keep using the kajillion lightning cables already in their collections, well, keep doing the happy you. Now, this was all originally designed to work with Apple's late, lamented, air-powered charging pad. So you could drop your iPhone, your AirPods, your Apple Watch, all on the same pad, all at the same time. But since air power has now been canceled, you have to either have a pad you can alternate with your iPhone, a spare pad, or a third-party multi-charging pad you can drop them both on to really benefit from the inductive charging. I have a Qi charger on my desk, so if my iPhone isn't in dire need of topping up, which it usually isn't, I started just dropping my AirPods there instead, which also often aren't in dire need of topping up, but since they're newer and shinier, they're getting preferential treatment for now. If you do likewise, it feels like the same type of magic as Apple Pencil 2 or the AirPods Buds themselves, like the case is just always charged to the point that you start forgetting it needs to be charged. And that's really the promise of Qi, and one that's still in the long, painful process of paying off. When I was at the Montreal airport the other day, there was a whole section that had Qi chargers between every seat. I dropped my phone and topped up a bit while I was waiting to board. It was great, but it should be great like that everywhere. Every gate at every airport, every train station, every bus, every table at every coffee shop and restaurant, every doctor's office, in every cab, every rideshare, it should just be everywhere. That's when Qi charging will go from being a novelty to being infrastructure, and all of our stuff will just always have power. Until then, if you're interested in the new wireless case by itself, you can get it for $79. But you have to already be invested in Qi charging pads for it to make any sense as an add-on to your original AirPods. If you need a replacement case, Qi or no Qi, I love having the charging light on the outside, so I'd say the convenience is worth it. If you're getting the new AirPods, the difference in price between $159 for the non-wireless case and $199 for the wireless case is small enough that I'd say just get the wireless case anyway. Even if you're not all in on Qi, the odds are that it'll still come in handy at some or many points over the next couple of years. Especially if the rumors are true and Apple starts including reverse inductive charging in some of its upcoming products. The second big change is the H1 chipset included in both new AirPod Buds. The old AirPods used the W1 chip, but since W2 ran off with the Apple Watch, Apple is now making dedicated silicon for its headphones, which is absolutely for the best, since wireless isn't just wireless, and what you wear on your wrist is probably going to have different requirements than what you wear in your ears, especially going forward. Now, you can't see any difference from the outside. The buds still look identical to the original wired earpods, and the stocks look the same as the previous AirPod models. I know some people still make fun of them and think that they look weird, which, can I say, I find more than a little weird at this point. The idea that having wires dangling all the way down to your waist is somehow more aesthetically pleasing than just the stocks is just a joke our change-resistant brains play on us. Soon enough, it'll be the wires that look tragically antiquated and weird. For now, the stock still makes space for a bigger battery and help get the mics lower down your jaw for better pickup. I get that the bright white color makes them really stand out. Apple is sticking with the same white that iPod made iconic. And it's fine if a little humdrum from the company that showed with Apple Watch that wearables can and should be fashionable. Now, I'm not saying I want or need seasonal AirPods socks and papaya or hyper grape, but I'm not not saying that either. 
And it's inarguable that the iconic white has been great for AirPods, maybe even contributing to their enormous popularity. They're like little neon earborne billboards, every one of them. Look no further than all the AirPod memes. So many memes, more than even Elon could review. It makes them so singularly identifiable, it's hard to see Apple giving up on that anytime soon. Which is why, socks. Kidding, kinda. The buds themselves are the same as well, which will be great news for most people and continued tragedy for everyone left. If you're new to my Apple Pod reviews, the original EarPod stayed in my grappling mangled ears, not at all. The tension on the wires itself was enough to just pull them out constantly. I've had that experience with most earphones over the years. AirPods are better. The left one is rock solid for me. The right one still a little loosey goosey. And yeah, you can hack or adapt your way around that, but not with any help from Apple. This is one of those cases where the 80-20 rule just shouldn't apply. AirPods should be truly amazing for everyone. Come up with a design that out of the box can always be made to fit Everybody, even if it does need to include in-the-box adapters. Seriously, leave no ear behind. There are also some big features the new AirPods still don't have. No iPhone-style water resistance, no Apple Pencil 2-style soft touch texture, no Apple Watch-style health sensors, no Bose-style noise cancellation. If you've been waiting on any of that, you're going to have to keep waiting. Or, come May, check out the just-announced, also H1-powered Power Beats Pro that are around the ear and in the ear, are much bigger, lack a capacitive charging case, but are water and sweat resistant, have noise isolation, and come in ivory, black, navy blue, and moss green. Yeah. But what you do get is Bluetooth 5.0 support, which makes the H1 AirPods faster to connect and to switch between devices and more stable when connected compared to the old W1 AirPods. Over the last 10 days or so, that's matched up with my experience. Where previously I could probably count to four or five when connecting or switching, now I can pretty much count to two. Where previously I'd sometimes have to tap or click two or three times to switch between my iPhone and my Mac, now it almost always happens on the first tap or click. iPhone to watch and back has always been nearly instant for me, but the improvement between iPhone and Mac, which is what I do most, is worth the price of admission for me alone. They still can't stay connected to multiple devices at once, which I know some people would prefer, but I have mixed feelings about. I often have audio kick in on my Mac, for example, like an embedded video or a download getting kicked over to iTunes, where I wouldn't want the last source wins to take over my AirPods. We effectively have that already with Apple Apple Watch, but I've never started audio or had audio start on my Apple Watch that I didn't expressly want to listen to, but I have had that happen on pretty much every other device. Being able to connect multiple AirPods to one device would also come in handy, especially when traveling together and you want to share. For now, two people can grab one AirPod each, which is fine for podcasts, even audiobooks, but not so great for music and movies. H2 also provides for 30% lower latency, which is great for gaming, and while I still need to dig deeper into this and talk to people in the community about it, I'm very much hoping for audio accessibility needs as well. If you've been using them for that, just let me know how it's been going in the comments. The new AirPods also connect to calls two times faster, which I really appreciate. In the past, it could be a bit stressful taking a call and trying to switch to AirPods, and either hoping it would work and you wouldn't miss anything important, or making a joke about it as everyone else on the call was also trying to switch. But since nothing wireless worked better or faster, it was just something everyone learned to live with. Now it's really fast, like really fast. So fast I haven't had any stress kick in at all. And likewise, when I've talked to people on the other end switching to the new AirPods, I mean, it's still switching to wireless, which still isn't the same as switching between built-in mics and speakers, but the gap is getting really small. H1 is also more efficient than the W1 and the previous AirPods, at least when it comes to talk time. Apple promises the same five hours of listening time, but now up to three three hours of talk time on a single charge. And if you do happen to run out, like if you use them to record back to back to back podcasts or videos like I do, or sure, take phone calls like normal humans, you can take a quick break and charge the pods back up to three hours in the case in just 15 minutes. Previously, you had to double tap on your AirPods to trigger Siri and relay commands to your other Apple devices. Now, you just say, yo Siri. That might not sound like a big difference on paper, but it really is in practice. I've said this many times already, but humans aren't great at context shifting. It's interruptive. So anytime we can keep doing what we're doing and just add something extra, that's 
way, way better than stopping, shifting, and then trying to shift back. And that's exactly what Yosiri enables. I can just walk around, setting up gear, doing housework, cooking, training, whatever, and never even think about stopping and tapping my AirPods. I can just say, Yo Siri, turn the lights purple. Yo Siri, add eggs to my shopping list. Yo Siri, set a timer for the pasta. And my new absolute favorite, Yo Siri, play Infinity War on my Apple TV. I know some people say they find it slow, but like four out of five times for me, it's just as fast as any device, and that other time isn't really any slower than any other device can be. Also, Apple has improved the mic to better recognize Yosiri, and as an added benefit, better cancel out noise like wind when you're talking. The audio out is still the same as the previous AirPods, so they don't sound any better, but the audio in is improved, so you sound better. And sure, HomePod could do ambient Yo Siri already, and so could any modern iOS device you have lying around or attached to your wrist. But you can whisper to AirPods, and when they answer back, it's in your ears and not out loud, and that's just so much more discreet. And of course, your HomePod stays at home or in the office. AirPods go with you everywhere. That's where I found it the most useful. When I'm out and about and my iPhone is in my pocket, my iPad or Mac is in my pack, and yeah, I could raise my watch, but now I don't even have to do that. It's everything Apple got right with Farfield on HomePod made Nearfield with AirPods. Like both sides of the same equation finally coming together. I can just say, yo Siri, like something out of every Iron Man movie and things happen, including listening to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in photography, video, business, technology, everything you need to make your life better. Take Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass, seriously. Take it. Thomas gives you everything you need to transform your personal and professional life by creating a simple, customized productivity system. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. And you can listen to all of it on your AirPods. To sign up, visit the link in the description and the first 500 of you will get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. Act now, start learning today. Thanks Skillshare and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. If you have the original AirPods and they're still working great for you, there's not much reason to upgrade. You can get the new inductive charging case for $79 on its own if that's all you want. Likewise, if your original AirPods have gone through enough charge cycles that the battery doesn't last anymore, I'd go for a second gen rather than a simple swap. If you've never had AirPods before, then these new second generation AirPods are better than ever. They're faster, more convenient to charge, make you sound better, and give you Yo Siri right in your ear holes. All for $159 without the wireless case, $199 with the wireless case, and I'd really go with. At least that's my recommendation. Now I'd love to hear yours. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps out the show, and then hit up the comments below and give me everything you've got on AirPods, past, present, and yeah, future. And thank you so much for watching.